All right, thanks for joining us on News Hub this morning. And uh, let's take a look at the front page of the newspapers every Wednesday, every Thursday. It's always our pleasure to have Habib Aruno join us. Habib uh, was a former CPS to the former governor of Lagos State, Akio Miyambwede. Uh, Habib, so nice to have you on the program today. Kindly unmute your device, Hello, please. Thank you. So before we delve into this, you did. Uh, I wonder if you saw the video of Nigerians in the diaspora, especially in Pakistan, really slugging it out with the natives. What would it be your take on that? I listened to what, what you guys said, uh, your ordinary remarks. Uh, we don't really have the facts of what, of what really happened. What transpired between Nigerians and uh, Pakistani security officials. We have to be very careful in uh, looking at it without the facts. But having said that, I don't think it's, it's uh, appropriate for Nigerians living abroad to behave in such a way. You know, that was indiscretion. That was not good. That was not good for our image. You know, I was thinking that Nigerians living abroad in any country, any part of the world, should obey the laws in their host country as the first thing. The third thing that happened, when they want to shoot you, when they want to, to express a reservation, you don't confront security officials. That would have resulted to many things, you know, that they are slavery. So I think that, that that was not good. And I think authorities should try and call Nigerians and advise them how to behave properly. That, that was not too good. That was not tidy at all. I saw it last week. I felt bad. You know, it, it would have got worse. Even though for the maturity displayed by the no security officials. It's not good at all. No, no, someone was saying that we, we die here. You know, that, no, 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 no. That, that, that was not that was not sensical. Follow the laws of your host country. That's the best thing to do. Not displaying and exhibiting rascality on the street. Not too good for us and our image. All right, fantastic opening there from Abib Aruna. Thank you for that perspective to the conversation. All right, so let's quickly look at the papers this morning. We'll begin with the Nigerian News Direct. Uh, major story here uh, is talking about the aviation sector. Excessive charges impeding growth of Nigeria's aviation sector. That's coming from Ayata. Uh, a few writers there. Uh, as FG unveils aviation roadmap projects, uh, Tenembu directs CBN to address repatriation of $600 million uh, trapped funds. Uh, FG woes investors with uh, tax holidays, aircraft maintenance facility. Interesting times for the aviation sector here, I must say. Uh, moving on, a few more stories here. Um, I chose the best brains, not just in Lagos, but Nigeria. That's coming from the governor of the state, Sonwolu. Uh, so we'll boast as he swears in 37 commissioners. How illegal miners transport gold from Niger State to neighboring countries using cattle. Wow. Governor Bago is, uh, is speaking here. Let's look uh, above the masthead. What do we have? Okay. Uh, 42 bidders win gas flare commercialization licenses. That's coming from the NUPROC. And this one, um, okay, Institute of Directors installs Borodo as 18th president uh, today. Interesting stories you could find on the front page of the Nigerian News Direct. This All right, now straight to the front page of the Vanguard on Thursday. Forex scarcity sends Naira tumbling to 930 Naira to a dollar. And that's a very big story that you also find here. $600 million trapped funds to Nubu Direct CBN to meet foreign airlines. Uh, so many other very interesting stories. So let's take a look at this. Nigeria accounts for 30% global malaria burden. That's according to a minister. And just uh, you have IGP, the class uh, killer of DPO Bakoin Rivers, wanted among other big stories on the front page of the Vanguard today. All right, also, let's go straight to the front page of this Nigeria, uh, which leads with a story captioned, How Illegal Miners Ferry Gold from Niger State Across West Africa with Cattle. Governor Bako raises the alarm, plans to take overall 
ungoverned spaces occupied by bandits. You also find just below the picture of the day, reps dismiss NLC's allegations of 100 million naira policy for lawmakers. And there's um, a lot of other interesting stories on the front page of this Nigeria today. All right, let's look at the punch newspaper next. The punch is super. Also, uh, parents protest as more, more universities hike fees. Uh, the writers there prevail on, on, on universities to reverse fee increase. A PTA tells Tulumbu fears a mass dropout. Uh, lecturers slam FG over poor funding. Students will take to cybercrime. Parents won. Hmm. Interesting one here. Uh, Libya flood kills 6,000 uh, victims buried in mass uh, graves. Uh, sad narratives coming from our neighboring African country. Now, lab, land grabbers violent return to Lagos, leaves a trail of blood uh, deaths. All right, um, a few more stories here above the masthead. Manufacturers slash output job, jobs over forex crisis and many other stories here. Yes, this might interest you as FG predicts heavy rainfall uh, flooding in 48 uh, towns. Many more stories you could find on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And so straight we go to the front page of the Nation newspaper today, which leads with a story on employers rejecting NLC's plan to shut down economy. Now the writers, why is it why it is avoidable by ESRM and do you see awaits government government action on proposal? Uh, the proposals they have there, there are uh, uh, quotations there credited to NECA as well as NLC. Very interesting, I want to imagine. Uh, so other stories, food, energy prices push inflation to highest level in 18 years. And you also find below the nameplate, uh, battle rages over rector in Oshunpoli. And above the nameplate, NIMSI moved to interior ministry to speed up passport issuance. And NEMA alerts flood to pound 50 communities in 13 states. And uh, Tinubu Abiodu and others felicitate with a lucky of Egba land at 80. Fantastic stories here on the front pages of the papers this morning. Let's quickly uh, meet with Abib. Let's hear his, his perspective on a few of the stories. Abib, let's begin with uh, the uh, lamentation or the alarm that was raised by Governor, Governor Bago uh, of, of Niger State. Uh, he's talked about um, illegal miners, um, gold from Niger State being ferried in cattle across the sub, the sub uh, Saharan African states. What can you make about this? No, I didn't get your point. I didn't get it right there. Okay, on the front page of this Nigeria newspaper right. is the concern about how illegal miners ferry gold using cattle across Africa. Uh, one begins to wonder, uh, gold is our natural resources, uh, it's our natural resources, and it should be under the exclusive uh, uh, list of government. So it should be government's prerogative to unnest this commodity, uh, you know, and it goes into the single, the single pocket. But here we have uh, illegal miners. Why has it been so difficult for us to, to clamp down on illegal mining of gold in Nigeria? That, that, that is a very instructive observation and question from you. Let me begin to ask yourself again, why is it that this, it is where there is this mining, illegal mining taking place, that you have bandits? Look at some mm. states. Mm. Look at Niger State. Look at the impending doom in the Lisha of some state. Then you know, also begin to ask yourself, why is it difficult for the government to arrest and prosecute People who are stealing our oil. Hmm? It's still the same thing. They are mutually inclusive. They are not mutually exclusive. Yeah. We are dealing with the same band of criminals who are so powerful because they have the resources. And unfortunately, the, the government is helpless in, in the government is helpless in arresting them. So sad. You see, these people will go to any length, perpetuate their evil deeds. I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, it's not, it's not a surprising thing anyway that they are using cartoons or even donkeys to do these things. So the onus is on government to make sure there are measures in place to checkmate all this, all this, all this nonsense that, that we are seeing. 
you know, and it, it will continue because it's very lucrative. It's very, very lucrative. They will continue to do it. The government has a duty to stop it. Because that's, that's their job. If for me and you, it's not our job. Our job is to raise concern. Their government job is to arrest this nonsense. It is stop for it. Because if it's not stop, banditry, terrorism, kidnapping will continue in these areas. They are connected. They are connected. That is very sad. I mean, not they, will do, they will do everything to get to get their money to do these things illegally. Don't forget that half foreigners involved. The Chinese are involved. Mm. The Chinese are very much involved in all these illegal mining. The government should do, do something about it. All right, they, they cannot just be watching and allowing them to. Uh, especially. And our, and our, and our, and our especially when we're talking about the need to uh, diversify the economy and we have nat other natural resources aside yeah. of crude oil. Let's speak with Ada. I wonder what she has to say this morning on, on any of the stories. Ada, good morning. Thanks for joining us from Plateau State. Good morning, Ada. Okay. Uh, I want to look at one or two um, headlines. Please go ahead. I'm, call I'm calling blind. I just hope I'm on the right track. Um, there's the Minister of Aviation. His assertion that he's going to make a, a Nigeria the aviation hub of Africa. Well, Nigeria is a very uh, Nigeria. We have a very big market since we have the population. But it's an irony that the country that is going to be an aviation hub will not have a single airline it can call its own. Um, nations are built by making deliberate and intentional efforts to put a lot of things in place to drive the economy. Stock is cheap. Enough of stock. It's now to work the work. Then as regards lawmakers, governors, in short, the political class being unsettled because of impending court rulings, it brings to the fore my, uh, my uh, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I've been saying it times without number, and I'm still saying it, that there's a need for the electoral act to amend so that all electoral petitions be disposed of before the controversial declared winners are sworn in. Another aspect that should be addressed is to shift the goalposts and make the that is the owners of proof or having conducted a free and fair election to INEC instead of petitioners, since they used to have difficulties in getting um, the evidence. Okay, Ada. Okay. All the same. Let's not give up Nigeria. Thank you very much, Ada. Keep the calls coming. Habib, stay very much with us on the program today. Uh, we're talking about the need for Nigeria uh, government to diversify the economy and perhaps for states also to look inwards and see what they can do with their natural resources. It's good that Governor Bako is speaking out, but much more than that, what can they do? I wonder. Lagos, uh, for instance, we know that Lagos is blessed with the uh, marine, uh, uh, you know, the aquatic splendor that really will bring a lot of things uh, for the people. But then what else can be done? Let's be with Dennis. They will come to you twice now. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on the show. Good morning. Good morning, Dennis. You're welcome. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe then it's one I do. The area I want to react, outside they have uh, two pits all over the, the fish, especially at the center you can see at the state uh, university. This minute, this is a uh, hack of uh, scoping. You don't go with our society because but now nah, nah, they want to make sure that they communicate that the cleaners who could not be more or who are not a politician who are trying to, to make sure that they go to school. I think the president is telling Nigeria that he knows that Nigeria is okay. Why is it that in all areas, the people are still doing this? Okay. Well, we're uh, not there. Yeah. yeah. Are we have another caller? Oh, not yet. Let, let's get back to Abib at this point in yeah. time. Uh, Abib, you want to respond to um, Ada's position because Ada, Ada was very, very particular about her, some, some of her demands. Habib, are you there? Get, what do I say, please? All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I, I spoke on many, many things. Yeah. And you see, we, 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 if, if our resources are not well managed, you know, there's no way we will have enough, uh, enough, enough, enough base to jack up even the, the, the Naira. The Naira is 9.50 yesterday to a dollar. If you don't, if you don't diversify this economy, there's no way you will have enough uh, ground to make the Naira to be strong. 
our foreign reserve will be depleting. And once that foreign reserve is depleting, Naira will be depleting too. Naira will go down against the any foreign currency. You know, how I, I, I appreciate what they are saying. But the, the one issue that we need to talk about here, the issue of FG and ASU, to guys to the hike in tuition fees now in universities. You know, we, we, we cannot run away from the fact that university education cannot be hmm. free. It cannot be free. That will face that reality. But at the same time, th that should be a way for government to caution its effects on people that cannot afford it. That is the function of government. If government is cutting cutting costs, if we are what, what we are seeing in Abuja, this jamboree we are seeing in Abuja, this exhibition of opulence we are seeing in Abuja is controlled. In my view, there will be enough money, you know, channel to these things. You can't just all of a sudden wake up and jack up to John Fish mm. in our institutions. Yes, reasonably that can be done with time. Let them educate the people, let them know why it should be done. But it should be done with reasonable limits. People should be informed, people should be educated on why it should be done, not just jack it up. Because I, I don't know, many people will, I, 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 I agree with us, you know, many people will be forced to draw their, their, their children because they cannot afford it. So government will do something about it. Then now go forget that. Now this issue of even loan, student loan. What, how have they gone with it? What is, what is going on with the loan? If there is, if it's effective, it will to some extent help people that cannot afford to pay school fees, to pay tuition fees. All right. But it should not just be it's only that they should do. They should, they should do it in concert with the uh, the other relevant stakeholders. That this is what we do, but this is why we are doing it, and this is how this is what we can do. If we cannot if if we cannot afford to pay the new fees, you know, fees. because it will affect many people. If it's, if it's done in a very dark way without putting the contribution, people that cannot pay the new right. fees. Thank you so much, Abi. Uh, let's also remind you that on Wednesday, the students of the University of Just Plateau State went on protest against the hike in the price in, in, the, in, the, in the tuition fees, and it's not limited to them alone. Other people also are uh, really have yeah. been protesting. Let's speak with uh, Mazio Kora for who joins us from Mabia State this morning. Yeah, Mazio Kora from Arutuku. Well, our reflection today has to say that. Uh, the institution of the Holy Cross that we are doing class on will bless. Now, you are asking me a question about how Nigerians outside them. But there are two types of Nigerians outside them. <coughs> those those ones that wait on their own are those of these forces that are their parents. Those ones that wait on their own, they are hustlers. They will try and be But those of sponsors that are their parents when they pour money to them. Mm -hmm. So they squander the money, they spend the money recklessly, so they don't even care about what is happening in the country and the purpose of going to that place. So that is why you see many of them that send something back home, that have resources, that send something home for people to back up here, are those who have households and went there and they have a purpose of going there to school and going there to work and have the different plans to do what? To come back home with something tangible. So that is why we have two types of Nigerians outside in any Europe, in any foreign country. But let's talk about our own Nigeria issue. The issue of Taraba state problems, this flood and gunmen or, or gunmen. There is need for the government, the new government. I think the governor there is a corner, retired. You should make use of his military experience to find a lasting solution to what is happening there in that state. Okay. Now, we saw what is happening in Libya and Morocco. They have given us a focus about the thunderstorm. But what are the country is doing? We just sit down and wait for the fire brigade, which is not ready. Libya, they were aware what happened. No, what happened? The African country, we just sit down and wait for the fire brigade, which is not ready. The University Authority, they said no school fees. Federal government fees, like this, I hear me there, my brother. Oh. Tell the federal government that the United States have increased school fees, so many children will not go back to school. Good morning, Mazo Kra for Provaro. Thank you. Thank you for your time on the show. Let's speak with Johanna. Uh, it's calling us from Lagos. Johanna, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, David. Good morning. 
And uh, <clears throat> it is amazing that the simple supply, we know that when the supply of any product, I'm talking basic economics now, that when the supply of any product increases, the price comes down. I don't know how that has escaped so many of our commentators that have failed to connect the failure or the devaluation or the loss of value of the Naira to the quantity of the Naira that the central bank pumps into the economy. Right now, the Naira is, is, is lower. You have more safer. If you want, if you go to exchange, the sepa is stronger. Are we saying that these countries have started producing anything? I really remember with with with, with pain, the, the, the Henry Boyle. Because even when we were producing more crude oil at a higher cost, the Nenga was still being devalued because they were turning it, they, they called it the Dutch auction system. Honestly, if we don't rightly diagnose that the problem is the printing, in fact, the original meaning of inflation is expansion of money supply. Yeah. And so as long as the money supply is expanded, well, as long as we don't stop doing that, the value of the Naira will continue to fall. Mm. And that is how Venezuela and Zimbabwe got to where they did. We must apply the right solution and stop expanding you know, in the supply of money into the economy. All right. Allow me. Good morning. Thank you so much for your now for that uh, submission. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Hello, good morning. Hello. Okay, please uh, keep the call uh, coming. Um, Habib, you, you were on the issue uh, surrounding the hike and the uh, um, tuition fees across the Federation, and parents are lamenting. Uh, I'd like for you to wrap up on that because there's one issue that many Nigerians are really concerned uh, about at this point in time. Yes, you see, when, when people like us went to school, and what I've been about say about 35 years ago, we, 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 I attended a federal university. You know, we pay school fees, but it was not something that we couldn't afford. How much did you pay? Every household was able to afford tuition fees, you know. But now, the knowledge system has been commercialized to the extent that it's becoming increasingly difficult for African Nigerians to pay tuition fees. So if you can afford it, you can take your children to private universities. But public universities should not be, should not be difficult, should not be out of reach of average Nigerians. That is why I don't, I don't agree. I'm totally indisposed to the position of some of these universities jacking up their tuition fees. It's not ideal, and I, 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 I am, I'm waiting for government to intervene and stop it, because Nigerians should be able to afford education. Yes, things are, things are, things are expensive. We are seeing it everywhere, but there at the same time, there should be some caution. You know, with some this, some this university before they wake up and just increase their, their tuition fees. Mm. It's not acceptable government should intervene. Okay. Because if they don't intervene, people will find it difficult to pay. And there'll be dropout. And there'll be social consequences for it. So the best thing is to stop it from generating into what will be, will be unfavorable to many Nigerians. Okay. That is my opinion on it. Papers. Let's take a look at the front page of Daily Times today. 100 million Naira policy claim. National Assembly, NLC, clash. And that's a very big story there, uh, if you see what's going on. You also can find a picture of the day that shows Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, River State Command, parading uh, some suspected vandals and illegal um, dealers in petrol and products in the state, uh, the, I mean, the faces should not be shown uh, professionally, but there you can see the lineup of how things actually went down there. You also find other stories here. Ademar, local government shares spoonsful 
of rice to residents as palliatives. So how many spoons to, to one, one family? It's not funny at all. You also find a drought. Thousands of other residents pray for rainfall. And that's an irony. It's raining cats, dog. And we have floods in Morocco. Thousands of people gone. What, what they wish for. What, what they wish for. So it's so, I mean, climate change, some would say, is real. And you find above the nameplate, Ayata slams federal government over 27 different airport charges. What is this all about? More stories also inside the Daily Times today. All right, let's look at um, The Guardian, the front page of The Guardian, talking about the economy. High prices push government homes uh, beyond average Nigerians' uh, reach. Very, very key conversation that we must begin to have uh, going forward. I think that again, high prices push government homes uh, beyond average Nigerians' reach. And um, we have a graphic illustration of uh, the movement of prices as it stands on the front page there uh, for you. Uh, let's look at a few more stories here. Uh, $800 million stock funds. The federal government directs CBN to set, directs CBN to settle foreign airlines backlog. And a few other stories here. FG moves NIMC to Ministry of Interior has issued NIN, NINs uh, hits 102.4 million million. Fantastic innovation there. Uh, those, are, those are the big stories you could find this morning on the front page of the Hold on, show. Yes. This one in the blue strip here, it says less than 1% of unemployed youths benefit from government's intervention. I think that is so very true. Let's move on to the next paper. All right, so the next paper is Daily Independence Today. Federal government asks CBN to meet airlines quarterly to resolve forex crisis. That's another story that's trending today. And below the picture of the day, 42 firms emerge successful bidders for Nigerian flare site development. What is this all about? The details inside the Daily Independence Today. You also find Nigeria's higher education landscape needs total overhaul. That's according to the minister. And the proceeds of kidnapping being used to finance terrorism. Uh, that's according to the Office of the National Security Advisor, ONSA. Uh, now, this is a very interesting story. It's on the bottom strip of the paper. Federal government to expedite action on passage of water resources management bill. This has been the bill that, be, uh, I, Habib, I wonder if you're there. The Water uh, Resource Management Bill had passed through, I want to imagine, as many National Assembly, uh, you know, as, as possible as you would hear. Mm. Maybe the Ninth Assembly, the Eighth Assembly, Seventh Assembly. And you keep wondering why that bill has refused or has not seen the light of the day. The, 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 the water issue. Yes, please. I, 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 I was talking that the issue has been left in the waste bin. But I don't know why the thing is coming up again. And I am particularly disturbed that our lawmakers, instead of using the time they have at the National Assembly to give us. Uh, policies and programs that will have impact on our lives. They are busy talking about what are bills. Well, I don't know, I don't know these, these benefits to, to, to Nigerians. I, I need to be convinced by the benefits to Nigerians, but I think the National Assembly's duty is to make laws that will be impactful to our daily life and not busy themselves with uh, this issue of water bills. I mean, we really have to uh, anchor it at this point. Water bills, well, water obviously affects the lives of Nigerians. And uh, if, if the bill will make the lives of Nigerians better, why not look at it? If, that's the operating word for me, if. Uh, but then we have to go right now, Abib Arono. Thank you so very much for uh, your time and thoughts with us on this segment of the show. Uh, we'll, we'll touch base with you next week, Wednesday. Thank you very much. Or Thursday, Thursday rather. Thursday. All right, bye there.